I have played more MMOs in my life than I can remember, but none of them have come close to the surreal insanity of Otherland. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and I want to take you on an insane journey. A journey through one of the most maddening MMOs I've ever played, spread over several episodes, because this truly was an experience of epic proportion. The footage in this video and the following parts will show you a game that almost no one has ever finished and will let us explore environments that only a handful of people, including the designers, have ever travelled through. I've been working on YouTube for a few years now, specialising in the MMO genre of games. I've made guides, opinion pieces, and recently my long-running Worst MMO Ever series, where I've been hunting down the strangest MMOs, playing them for a few days, and turning the experience into a light-hearted review. This game was meant to be one of those videos. It was meant to be another episode of Worst MMO Ever, but nothing prepared me for quite how odd Otherland would be. And nothing prepared me for the stupid choice I made halfway through playing it. This is part one of my journey to experience all of Otherland, a vast MMO to get every single Steam achievement in this game while being the only player in the world. Before we begin this journey into chaos, consider dropping a like on the vid or subbing to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell if you want all the future notifications. A massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. Right, grab a drink and settle in, because this gets weird. Otherland. I'd never heard of it, but the Steam description tells me it's based on a series of sci-fi novels by American author Tad Williams. I've not read them, so I'm hoping knowledge of the books isn't needed to enjoy the games. The Steam reviews are also mostly negative, so I'm already lowering my expectations. The game launches, it's made in the Unreal Engine, which is a pretty powerful thing, so I'm expecting some nice visuals at least, and I'm not disappointed with the looks of the menu. But there's no sound, no background music at all. It's very eerie. Create a new character, only seems to be one server, and the character creation is somewhat limited. I don't seem to be able to change my gender, and the standard issue character model reminds me of those Mafia City adverts. You know the ones on Facebook with the level one crook walking around in them, because this is just the generic model. The face options have sliders, so obviously I slide everything to the extremes and make what amounts to a sad clown. None of the hairstyles suit him as much as being bald, so let's begin with bald sad clown. Now a really odd choice, do I want to be a social or a normal character? You see, Otherlands allows characters who value the social interaction of an MMO, the community and chatting, to skip all that pesky gameplay and just sit in the main city talking. But I'm quite the fan of actual gameplay, so we'll go with normal. There are four classes, and each one can deal damage, but two are damage while tanking, and two are damage while healing. And after clicking the warrior, it asks me if I want to test. Okay, you can test the classes before committing to them, that's nice. So let's jump into the test arena. What on earth is this? Right, so Otherland is a sci-fi series of novels, and The Otherland is made up of a series of virtual worlds, which are on full display here. The environments in this game are insanely cool. The visual designer deserves an award. This is unlike anything and will become even crazier as we go on. And the opening section of this game might honestly be the most memorable section of a video game I've ever played. However, while the visuals may be striking and lovely, the rest of the game is extremely badly built. You left click to do your basic attack and pressing control activates the cursor, but look, I click on the quest icon, and the quest description is default description, please change this. They've not even bothered to proofread the class testing zone. Now typos are the least of my worries, because despite enemies looking visually impressive, the combat mechanics just straight up don't work. Sometimes hits just stop connecting for seemingly no reason. After testing a bit, it seems that your attacks won't start connecting until the enemy notices you. And because the netcode in this game is a complete mess, sometimes the enemy just ignores you, even if you're right in front of them. Other times they'll spot you from the other side of the map, and you can only attack back when they decide that combat should begin. I mess around with the class test for a bit, then return to the class selection window, and another issue, the metamorph character creation window is now glitched open over the class selection. I guess I'll start the game as a long range DPS. If melee combat is so bad, hopefully I can just stay far away from stuff and shoot it. 
The opening of the game is a training section. It's styled on a virtual simulation and it breaks the fourth wall heavily as this training NPC refers to things like the chat box and spawned items and the heads up display, checking we can interact with all of them. With that, he summons a portal, we step through and the madness begins. We start the game in... Honestly, just watch this cutscene. An existential, corrupted, destroyed Victorian orphanage ripped asunder down the centre and frozen in time and space as we walk down the stasis-held centre. The phantoms of children playing shown as jet black cutouts. This is Lovecraft levels of creepy and it gets so much worse. Everything is frozen and still, except us. We are free to walk by, heralded by the ambient ethereal strange. We meet another person. They give us the quest to find others in this realm. So we keep going. We meet the simuloid Sweetie Cheng, and she sends us to find someone called Crit You in the Face. I walk a bit more and I talk to Crit, and now I have a bow. I head through this door and another cutscene of a man preaching to four others on a central podium inside a room described as... How? How do I describe this in words? Ancient Egyptian techno neo-punk nouveau riche. I stop to write some notes and when I look back, I'm standing like this. How? How has this happened? So I mess around for a bit and write. It seems that going from high to low ground doesn't quite make the character model fall. It makes the legs slowly extend from the knee. And if you're quick, you can glitch it into this position. I enjoy messing with that for a bit, then we get into our first fight. And there are just particle effects, triangles and squares flying everywhere. Attacking with the bow has a very soft lock system onto the enemy, but you can also just randomly miss. Doesn't really matter where you're aiming, because it doesn't always go where you're aiming. And if you turn while firing, sometimes the camera turns, but your aim doesn't, meaning you just keep shooting into the distance. We'll see this more later. I make it into the crowd on the podium expecting an NPC to talk to, but no, they're frozen too. And there's nothing, there's no collision. You can just run right through them. This whole experience is uncomfortable. This feels wrong. I press M for the map and, oh, this isn't right either. It's big, but it doesn't open centred on the player. It opens centred on the area, and you have to drag it to you every single time. There's also an icon list on the left, but hovering the cursor over the icons doesn't give you any information about what they actually are. It's literally just a list of icons that you might see. I leave the room and press on, and another cinematic. Now, granted, the visual flair of the fly-through cinematics is amazing. They've got such a great sense of action and chaos and movement captured in this frozen image. The dramatic power here is immense. But good god, walking through this is creepy. And the oppressive silence just adds to the feeling of, I don't belong here, something is wrong. Playing this opening section made my stomach twist because it just feels so incomprehensibly incorrect. I fight on, and we're effectively in a tunnel of realities, cut apart and glued together with light. Are these scenes from the book? Are these worlds we get to visit? I don't know, but this is the most striking, stylistic opening I have ever played in a video game phasing through multiple existences, frozen in time, really gives you a sense of what other land visually is. But for every impressive visual touch, there's two bad ones. Killing this zombie makes it explode and the chunks of flesh just spin on the floor. I killed a few more to make sure this wasn't a fluke and no, this happens every time. Now another cutscene, a flying winged coffin fires an energy beam at a group of, I assume, brave heroes. How do you begin to describe what this looks like to someone? This is one of the only times I've ever seen a video game use graphics in such an incredibly weird way, it's almost impossible to describe it with words. What is this aesthetic? Egyptian sci-fi neo-punk. Synthwave retro-futuristic Egypt. I have no idea. This is something you need to see to understand. I'm also not getting any experience from fighting these lower level enemies, so there's no point in fighting them. I open the quest list, I check the available quests, and another odd visual bug. All the available quests are highlighted with blue bars of light. Clicking on one of them, that's essentially selecting the quest, 
removes the bar of light, so it looks like you're deselecting the quest instead. When this list is full, it's obvious, but with only two quests in it, it looks like the game just highlights the wrong one. When has a game ever used the highlight every single quest except the one you're clicking on visual choice? I run around more and I can't. There's a giant invisible wall blocking me. Have I gone the wrong way? Have I missed something? So I run all the way back. I find the NPC rage gun fighting some enemies, but I can't interact. I can help the fight, but the NPC doesn't react and nothing seems to matter. I run back to the start and I find crit you in the face and ah, right. Here's the issue. Talking to an NPC sometimes finishes a quest, like it did with Crit earlier, but then the conversation just ends. You need to talk to the NPC again to accept the next quest in the quest line. It doesn't carry it on for you. So I finished the quest earlier, got the bow, and then I just moved on, when what I should have done is finish the quest, get the bow, then talk to him again. So now I accept the quest. I get this hint box pop up telling me about things, I click the next button to scroll through all the hints, and oh, when you get to the last page of the hints, the next button is still there, and clicking it just flashes the page white. This is a UI issue. If you're on the last page of a list, blank out the next button. Small touches like this show how rough around the edges the game really is. Sometimes people watch my videos and they get annoyed that I nitpick all the small details, but to me, it's the small details that show the real polish of a game, so we are going to go deep in this playthrough. Now I'm on the quest, I can fight the enemies off and actually help these guys, however I need to do most of the damage for the kill to count in the quest, and my hits don't register on the enemies until the enemies acknowledge me. So even this small quest takes some time. I open the inventory and click on the question mark button to see if there's anything else I need to learn and oh, it doesn't do anything. The help icon is broken, so if you wanted to know more about the inventory in the tutorial, tough, you can't. I push on and I get some more plot from the NPCs, it seems that other land is collapsing, that's what we've been seeing. Some guy called Felix is breaking it apart and using it as his own personal plaything, acting out his god fantasy. We need to find some magical material called Soma to glue it back together, otherwise all the simulations will be lost. And here's the cool part. The simulations of the other lands, that's the bug planet, the giant ants, the Martian surface ruled by 19th century British colonial soldiers, or the chess-themed medieval fantasy battle, they don't know their simulations. So plot-wise, we are saving their entire existence. I shoot some bugs, then interact with the goo they make to gather some soma. Interacting with anything means crouching down and wiggling your hands, and then... Oh, there's no standing up animation, you just snap back into position. We push through the tunnel of realities into the sci-fi mall next. Again, total stasis. The robots of one side, the humans of the other, leaping into a frozen riot with only a few enemies we can attack, and here you can see just how badly configured the gun is. I am aiming right at the enemy, crosshairs are on them, and the bullets are just whizzing past. Now I'm both impressed by the hitboxes of the bullets and appalled by the combat mechanics. The aesthetics of this simulation reality tunnel are incredible. I've never seen a game start like this. This is honestly unforgettable. And we'll see as this goes on, the visuals in the game are top notch, especially the environmental design. Normally I would tell you to avoid the MMOs I review like The Plague, because I find the bad or dead games so you don't have to, but if you're interested in visual design, or using the 3D games design space to create a sense of environmental wonder, then play the opening of this game, just for the atmosphere. This is the Mars level, Martian workers being oppressed by soldiers dressed in the red colonial uniforms of the British Empire. I mean, yeah, let's be fair, if you were going to have an empire oppress an entire planet, it might as well be the one that nearly oppressed this entire planet. Stick to what you know. Along with my gun being impossible to aim, it apparently turns sideways when I hold down fire while not aiming at an enemy, and I can even rotate the camera and my character stays locked in place, shooting at whatever they think needs to be shot at. If you do play this game, you must also make sure to let go of the idea that you are in charge of what your character does. The next reality, we step through the light and a hellish demonic battlefield between some winged denizens and a gleaming fantasy army. I cut down three zombies, finally have enough soma to fix this place, and I get a nice new shirt for my troubles. This dude says Felix is looking for us, so we need to disguise ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you here. This plot was clearly written on an immense amount of drugs. 
and even attempting to understand it is maddening. So instead, I'm just going to take each quest at face value and agree to do whatever it says. And if anyone ever tells you they understand the plot of the Otherland MMO, they are lying. Oh, standing directly on the edge of something like this makes your character vibrate up and down too. And oh god, what the hell are my legs doing now? It's worse than before. Okay, I figure out if you stand on the low floor, then step to higher ground, the game refuses to move your torso until your legs catch up. And sometimes it lags, so you get this squat stance. The texture on your skin also looks like Stretch Armstrong. You don't have knees, you just have a little bit in the middle of your legs that softly curves. I need to kill 10 of these things now, and because they're now a quest enemy, they drop a quest item. Every item an enemy drops explodes out of its body, and every quest item on every quest just looks like a wireframe trophy. While doing this, because combat really is quite dull, I try to clip out of the map. And to be fair, they've actually got these areas rather well hemmed in. But sometimes, like this, the scenery doesn't have any collision detection. Oh, this bit of decoration is also just the same model as the giant flying coffin from earlier. And oh! Oh, the camera has no idea what to do when you are by a wall. You can clip the camera inside your own hollow body and see your legs. Or you can look at the inside of your own face, literally any time you're standing next to a solid object. Kill all ten, then talk to Selas, that's the NPC guiding us, and he tells us we need to hack into the Otherland network and deactivate three power nodes to limit the power Felix has. We will do this by visiting the virtual world, so you know what game, you're in charge, let's just do this. The first world, and I love this transition, from running up a clinical white virtual staging hexagon surface to the mud, wood and blood of a World War I era trench. The visual transition is fantastic, and then journeying through this trench is surreal, again frozen, again silent. But there's flames mid-lash, soldiers mid-scream and burning in frozen silent horror. But the creepiest sight? is this regiment of soldiers, all using the same model, all lined up perfectly, and none of them with any collision. You can run straight through all of them. Fight through the trench, a few soldiers, all the same model obviously, attack us, and sometimes combat goes fine, sometimes it just stops responding. Sometimes when I'm out of combat I can use the right click rest ability, sometimes not. Seems to be random as to when. I know you need to be out of combat, but that doesn't seem to be enough. I deactivate the power cube and then move on and I see this bit. God damn, this game outdoes itself in the creepy visuals every single minute. The area between the trenches of the warring armies is cleared, a huge depression in the earth filled in with stagnant water caused by this large humanoid figure wielding some ethereal energy and the soldiers from both sides are walking down the muddy slopes toward him and worshipping him. They are slaves, frozen slaves to a frozen god. I will never ever be able to forget this image, because it is so strikingly disturbing. A single NPC I spoke to earlier tells me they call this thing Dread and they began worshipping it the moment they saw its immense power. Completely by accident, then managed to clip the camera inside one of the faces of the frozen soldier, and I'm not even sure if this makes it hilarious or even more creepy. It's just so unusual, I don't know what to think about this. I fight through more of the trench, and I take on a bit too much, and I die. When you die, you can respawn at your corpse or at a nearby portal, but the corpse option has a cooldown. It doesn't show you what it is, but it does have one. Talk to Celus and the Swap Weapon tooltip pops up again. This is the fourth time this exact tooltip has popped up and the fourth time I have closed it. He sends us through the portal to the next layer of Otherland and I'm just playing in a state of awe and wonder. I'm actually excited to see what they can make next. It's a sci-fi reality, the sky ripped apart, purple neon obelisks lining a pathway to the giant floating coffin angel, a handful of fighters shooting at him while he blasts lasers down onto them. I accept a quest and I need to destroy the obelisks, so I start shooting and this spawns little minions. They're so small they're hard to aim at and the softlock isn't really helping because my gun just misses. They swarm me and they take me down a few times. Thankfully, the resurrection portal is right there, so getting back in is fine. One time, however, I do die standing up. 
This isn't the last time the game will just completely forget to play death animations. The only way I can do this quest is by throwing myself at the obelisks again and again and eventually they go down. I finish the quest and I'm sent through more portals to find Selas. This time I'm in a futuristic museum. Displays of caged beasts and bugs with a dying soldier on the floor. It's actually the same soldier from the World War I trench, but this is the original and he tells me the grail has happened and it's inevitable and more sci-fi sounding techno speak. Then I move on and oh wow, this effect. I like this effect. They have used a distance based visual trick. When the player is far away from that model of a table with people playing either side, the model is physically small. But as we move closer, the model grows at an accelerated rate. So it looks tiny, but we end up running underneath it. I absolutely love when games use non Euclidean geometry to mess with players because gaming is the only medium that can do this. The visual designers of this opening area need an award. If you made this, this is incredible. Talking about visuals, let's just watch this next cutscene. This is 8 squared, a virtual chess simulation that grew consciousness and evolved. That was incredible. Salas now tells us that Felix is gone, the Neo Grail is activated, and we need to kill 14 Neo Grail soldiers, so I get to kill him. Now, beyond the insanely awesome environmental graphics, let's address the elephant in the room, and that is your character's ass. It is succulent. They have used the standard Unreal Engine player model, and that model just happens to have a phenomenal ass. And every weapon has a slightly different walk animation, and every walk animation is a showcase of ass. So yes, if you play this game, prepare for intense ass graphics. For the entire time, because even with armor equipped, it is still that round. Nothing can contain dat ass. The combat, honestly, is what ruins the game. The combat is inconsistent, it's unreliable, hits sometimes connect, sometimes not, it's super generic, and when you compare a combat system like any other to visuals like nothing else, it serves to highlight how generic the combat is. I said that I value gameplay earlier, and I do, but I would have enjoyed this opening section more if there would have been no combat, because the combat does not make this section better. The combat detracts from the incredible Incredible atmosphere. I kill 14, then Salas tells us we must leave and find a group known as the Admins and let them know about the situation. So I run through and good lord, this battlefield map is incredible. The sense of movement in this frozen tableau is unspeakably brilliant. The dramatic storytelling in just the placing of the game assets, the NPCs leaping through the air, the battalion of soldiers lined up. I really wish I could press the unpause button and see how this scene plays out because in my head it's epic. The giant virtual chess pieces in the sky just add to the surrealist vibe. I run up these steps and we power up this portal by killing eight enemies. We run through and now we're in a dystopian sci-fi city. Think Blade Runner, think Judge Dredd, think Deus Ex. Our mission is to survive while ambushed by these people, but it's a scripted mission so you have to fail. And after a futile fight, we wake up in a prison cell. I chat with the others and then listen to the guard. Seriously, your quest is just listen to the guard. So listening to the guard finishes the quest and we finally finally get some trousers. Don't worry though, they can't contain the ass. Now we need to distract the guard while someone else knocks them out, so we chat to the guard and then this happens. Just watch this. This game has made me say what the hell multiple times now, but that was the most what the hell of all the what the hells. 
Why was the prison door just unlocked? And why, good lord, why did it need a rock music, yeah, scream over it? Why did sound design for this game just... What were you thinking when you added that? Escape the cell, go and grab my weapon from the chest because we got put into a prison cell. Of course our weapons got taken off us. And why does this PC monitor have such a high definition picture of a woman on it? Why is this such a detailed image? Anyway, grab my weapon from the box and oh, these aren't my weapons, they are better. It's a bow too, so I shoot around and ah, it seems that you can't actually aim unless you are aiming at an enemy. You can shoot horizontally, but you cannot shoot up or down. There is no vertical transition in shooting, so Otherland has the same shooting mechanics as Doom. Now I learn about heavy and special attacks, and we need to use them to break the door. This is actually a decent system, and requiring the player to use it to progress in the tutorial is a great way of making sure a player understands it. The only issue is how bad your hit detection is and how awkward the combat controls are. Basically, every time you attack an enemy, you'll build up two bars, to the left and right of your aiming crosshair. To the left is your heavy attack, and when it's full, press Q for a heavy attack, and to the right is special. When it's full, press E for a special. So even the keys they've mapped them to, Q and E, respect the screen direction of the bars, left and right. Attack the door, then break it down using a heavy attack, then defend against waves of enemies. The physics in this game seems to switch often. Sometimes I'm certain the game is using physical bullets and models for hit detection. Other times I'm sure it's just using scan for hits, and I've got no clue what it's actually using because the combat lag seems to switch as it feels like it. The enemy dies and then asserts total dominance over me by T-posing while fading away. Escape the jail in the most boring jailbreak sequence of all time and then meet Rennie. She is on our side and asks us to kill six gang members. This outside scene with the distant dystopian city and the virtual floor and the wireframe metal sheeting honestly reminds me of the old 2000 AD annuals. This sort of atom punk look we expected from the future, likely to be combined with grimdark dystopian, I'm not ashamed to say that I love this aesthetic. And just while I'm immersing myself in the atmosphere, this happens. My character model just starts switching stance back and forth while shooting, but not stepping into the switch, just quickly rotating backward and forward. See, once again, the game sets up a great atmosphere and then just breaks it with terrible, terrible design. Sometimes, especially with shooting, the combat aim just drifts and you'll end up shooting to the side. But it works in five bullet bursts or so. So five bullets go in one direction, the next five in another. Anyway, I kill the gang members and help these five NPCs to get up and run away and now we all group up and run up this ramp to a portal and escape. I take some time to marvel at the destroyed distant buildings while running up the ramp, suspended with slabs of concrete blown out of them. Another great example of motion implied with no actual movement. Well, through the portal we go. I appear in the main city. Now this is a hub-based MMO, meaning this is the central hub players meet in and then they travel to the outer connecting world, literally the other lands, to adventure around. Arriving here grants me the Steam achievement first steps. Reach the Lambda Mall. Only 21% of players have this, meaning 21% of players finished the tutorial. That's not many. Oh, also, a tooltip tells me that the question mark icon in my inventory is now unlocked. What a strange unlock. Well done for finishing the tutorial. You've unlocked the hints and tips feature. Oh, also, this is the Lambda Mall. This means when I checked the available quests section of my quest log at the start of the game and it said Lambda Mall, it means here. So from the very start of the game, your quest list shows quests accessed here. That's quite strange and confusing for a new player. I explore round and honestly I cannot praise the overall atmosphere of this game enough. Giant rising buildings, or the see-through floor and the endless city void below, the adverts, the screens, the lights, the NPC crowds, despite having no other players. Literally, I checked. Right now, I am the only player on the planet. To prove that, here's footage from slightly later in my playthrough. I went to the auction house and had a look what's listed for sale. Nothing. There is literally nothing for sale on the auction house. So I put two things up for sale. I am the only player with items for sale in this game. This city actually has a very alive feel to it. I feel like a stranger in a strange city, a traveler 
somewhere exotic. And because of the incredible, weird, immersive graphics, it's actually fun to run around, even if it is a little bit overwhelming. However, again, the game can't help but mess up, and opening the map shows this. Yeah, the map opens wrong still. I mean, at least the icons make sense now because there are icons on the map, but even if I drag the map so I'm in the center, every time I reopen the map, it snaps back to the edge. A quest sends me to talk to this dude. He calls me generic and tells me to go and change my skin. Wow. Okay. Rude. Developers, possible suggestion, consider removing any quest from your game that might be, you know, considered slightly racist. And if the quest is literally, I don't like your skin colour, go and change it, it's definitely racist. Seems the quest actually requires you to go back to the Metamorph shop, like the character creation earlier, and change your skin to something else. You need to do this. It doesn't matter what you change it to, and you can change back, you just have to be different. Even if you don't want to, you must change at least once. This is the only way to advance. Now off to the skill trainer. Ah, right, okay, so this is just a quest line that sends me all around the hub city to understand the layout. I get this, and I hate how uninspired the quest design is while being totally enthralled by the visual design. Whoever wrote and planned the quests in this game was just phoning it in. This is talk to A, go to B, click C, but whoever designed the environments, god damn, they took their jobs seriously. This, this cyberpunk city is more cyberpunk than cyberpunk. And, oh, okay, these are the skill trainers, just five panels with hand symbols on them. I was kind of expecting people. I press F next to them, and yeah, these are them. But there's no pop-up or cursor tooltip or hint to press F. I just did, and it happened to work. And this is the interface. See the scroll list to the bottom right, the one with five skills showing? Yeah, that's the skill trainer interface. You've got the entire screen to use for UI, and this is what you go with. I imagine the dude spent all week designing the city, then went, oh shit, gotta do the skill trainer UI, and just threw this together in like five minutes. Running back to hand in the quest and just listen and see if you can hear what I hear. Certain surfaces don't have footsteps. It's as if the walking or running sound is tied to the floor you're moving on, not the character model, and they've just forgotten to put it on some surfaces. Normally, audio cues for movement, such as footsteps, would be tied to the character model and then changed based on the surface you're on, not entirely dependent on the surface. Explore some shops and find this one. This NPC asks me if I want to open the Tad Williams online store. Now, Tad Williams is the author of the Otherland books, so this seems like a perfect place to advertise. I click yes, and nothing happens. Doesn't launch a window in the game. Doesn't open a browser window. Nothing. The online store function is broken. Although, I'm going to be honest, I can't imagine you're missing out on a huge amount of sales. Now I find an article online from PC Gamer. The writer Matt Elliott also played through Otherland, and he had pretty much the same experience as me so far, but he stopped here. He explored the main hub and called it a day, but we, oh man, we are going to go so much further. Next quest forces us to explore our U-Space, that's the Otherland name for player-owned housing. You travel to your own U-Space using the giant portal in the middle of the plaza and you arrive in the staging room, then you go through the door to your actual room. Here you can change the lighting colour on the walls or the wall decor. You can buy extra stuff for this, but I'm really not bothered about this right now. The first thing I am reminded of though is how much this room looks like the room from the first Star Wars film. Round chairs, giant windows looking into the city below, curved walls, open space. This is a dead ringer for the apartment in The Phantom Menace where Anakin and Obi-Wan protect... What's her name? You know the one that I mean. I'll put a picture on screen now. There's also a huge floating text message outside the window. It's a thank you message from the developers thanking people for supporting them while they work on the game, thanking them for their patience and understanding. And I'll take this time to remind you right now, I am the only person on the planet playing this game. So on behalf of the entire player base, which I definitely have the authority to speak on, you are welcome, developers. The quest line sees us leave and then travel to another apartment, chat to some NPC, accept some quest to go and save some place, and why is the door a sky texture? Why? Why is this the way that it is? 
Oh, I guess I've got to accept the neon flowing palm trees. I also need to accept the endless sky door. Back to the main menu, take the portal to the Water Village. Remember, this is a hub-based game, and all the adventures start in this city, and all the players, or player in this case, meet here before travelling off to other lands. So let's go and save the Water Village. Hold on, Sora, I'm coming. We travel to this oriental looking village nestled within a bamboo forest and our first quest is to go and kill eight rocks. I'm not joking, they're not special magical rocks or enemy rocks or even hidden rocks. They are just lying on the ground, highlighted with a quest marker and we just murder them in cold blood. Die rock, ha <laughs> ha, yeah, gameplay. After defeating the eight terrifying rocks, we need to talk to and help three survivors. So we go up to this pile of identical NPC models and we say to them, yes, I'm here to help, or no, I'm not. Saying yes helps them and saying no just ends the conversation. Why? This is the only time in the game you can say no to an NPC and have it not progress the quest. You have to say yes three times. So saying no is a pointless choice. Don't let the player make a choice if that choice is irrelevant. After saving three people, we need to scout the village. This is done by running to four points in the village. These are points we have already been to. These are points you can see from standing in the middle. This isn't scouting. This is the game designer's way of testing out waypoints, then being really proud they managed to get them working, and just demanding they got put into a quest somewhere. Finish the pathetic scouting, talk to this dude, and he tells us to go and rescue villagers from the monkey men. Okay, monkey people, that's quite pulp fantasy. I hope this is explored more and it's not just a single throwaway quest in an area that we never revisit. Spoilers, it's exactly that. I'm meant to be saving this group of villagers from the monkey people by killing 15 monkey men, but the villager NPCs are super aggressive and they're killing any monkey man that comes near them, so who am I saving? These guys seem to be tougher than me. They could just walk home. They're not in danger. They're hunting monkeys. Anyway, I killed 15 monkey men and the combat system really, really hurts this game. Honestly, with the graphics and story so far, it would make a decent walking simulator, but the lackluster combat with the buggy hit detection and the special moves that just straight up rip Used to happen sometime, make it weak. Seriously, I max out my special attack meters and heavy attack meters, press Q and E, and then nothing happens most of the time. Or when it does happen, it misses. It's an AOE special attack. It's not meant to be able to miss. Kill 15 monkeys and talk to this villager the exact moment the NPC model steps behind this bush. So it looks like I'm just having a nice chat with the shrubbery, then report to the warrior dude and he sends me to chat with the village elder because, you know, that's how fantasy stories work. You kill some monkey men, then have a chin wag with the elder. The Water Village, a bamboo town built on top of a lake. I decide to start this off right by shooting the villagers and they are surprisingly chill with this. Running through and there's another hand icon like the skill trainers earlier. Wonder if all skill trainers use that strange bottom right shop interface and yeah, they do. Guess this is the best shop they could design. The village itself is awesome. Again, super memorable, oriental lanterns hanging down, bunting draped round, boats docked up. There's a load of little visual flares like these butterflies that let you know they really did care about designing the look of the game. But then you get NPCs just walking off the path and over the water or over a shop or over each other and you realize they spent all the budget on the looks and none on the actual mechanical systems. Meet the Elder, accept a few more quests from all the NPCs round here. Turns out these guys are all representatives of various elemental tribes and they're all meeting for a celebration. I mean, I made that Avatar The Last Airbender reference earlier as a joke, but I guess we are actually just straight up doing that plot. Okay then. While running around and following these mundane fetch quests, I really miss the start of the game. Right now, I'm hunting down an item for a merchant, and I'm just being sent from NPC to NPC to find it, and I'm doing all this within a simulation of a relatively believable Asian water village. And the quest itself is just forgettable. This isn't time and space tearing itself asunder. This isn't an orphanage of black silhouetted ripped in twain people. This is most definitely not a tunnel of existences phasing into one another. This is a crap MMO right now. This is a generic MMO with a terrible combat system. If this were the opening of the game, I would have accepted this as another bad MMO attempt and I'd have moved on. But the game has shown me that it has the design skill to be surreal and incredible and memorable, and I want it to return to that. 
I dive down into the water and swim around for a bit. Now, fun fact, I am actually terrified of the open ocean. I don't mind swimming in there, but the vast nothingness of the empty sea creates an immense feeling of dread within me. It's so effective that I even feel the same way in video games. It's even why in the Battle for Azeroth expansion in World of Warcraft there was a hidden horn under the ocean where you could summon one of the Elder Gods and it absolutely scared the crap out of me. But nothing is scarier than accidentally clipping the camera into your own face while looking away and writing the script, then glancing back at the screen and seeing this staring at you. I terrified myself when this happened. Kill this NPC for a quest item, marvel as this villager just ignores gravity and walks over the water, interact with 10 rocks to cause 10 bits of sulphur to appear, shown by the trophy item again, collect all 10 and then return all the quests. After I've handed them in, are there any more quests? I check the quest log and no, seems not. The area list seems empty. But then I open the map and oh, there are still quests shown by the golden trophy symbol. They just don't show up in the quest list. You'd think if an area was going to have an area quest list, it would actually show the quest within that area. But no, turns out that Otherland doesn't do that. You have to check the map. I talk to this giant tree. He needs four foxes killed, so I go and kill four foxes. And then I face the toughest enemy so far the glitched dead fox. This fox has been killed. It is on zero HP. Its model is in the death pose, but it refuses to give up and glides after me, hurting me. I cannot attack it, I cannot escape, I cannot leave combat, and I cannot heal. I am forced to accept my fate as this dead fox kills me. Redo the quest, manage to not bug the fox out this time, lead this tree back to the bigger tree, then lead all the trees back to the ambassadors. Now the celebrations can begin, but I need to let the villagers know. I need to tell five villagers about the celebrations, but it must be five very specific villagers in a very specific order. Why must it be that order? Why must it be those villagers? How do I know it's those villagers? Because that's how the quest has been programmed and this is the easiest way to make the player run around a lot. The festival starts now and then gets attacked by some evil dudes. Honestly, if I'd read the books, I'd probably know. Or if the plot made any kind of sense. This NPC tells us it was the Celestial Dragons. Well, God, yes, obviously it's the Celestial Dragons. How did I forget? And we need to go and fight them. Well, okay then. Go and rescue the ambassadors, fighting through the village and killing demons whenever the game is kind enough to let my hits register. Then fight to save this person in a flooded field. I need to kill three demons to save them. And they have three demons around them, seeming obvious so far. But then the game again bugs out and only registers one kill, even though I've killed all three of them. So I'm forced to just stand around waiting for the quest enemies to respawn. And they have a long respawn timer. You might also see that exclamation mark symbol to the top middle of the screen. That means I've leveled up and need to visit a skill trainer. That happens every time I unlock something and it usually goes away after a few seconds, but this one has decided to stick around. This happens quite frequently with the UI. Sometimes pop-up hint boxes or overlays just don't go away. I can't click it, I can't remove it, and it overlaps my UI icons at the top, so I'm forced to just accept it and leave it there until the game decides to unload it. Fight up this hill and kill 10 demons along the way. The inadequacies of the combat system are on full display by now. Hits phase through enemies, aiming just swings wildly around, special attacks don't work when I click them. It's an absolute crapshoot of what mechanics will or won't work. The top of the hill leads me to a portal that drops me into a chaotic fight between some demons and... I mean, I've been assuming these people are the good guys, but I really have no idea. There is a domed shield in the centre, however, that when I jump on acts like a giant trampoline. So this is fun for a bit. Chat to the Watermaster. They explain it's all the Celestial Dragon's fault. They have broken the world and we need to fix it. We can start by killing five beacons. Well, they know more than me, so I get to killing the beacons. The Celestial Dragon then appears, the fight happens, and the dragon escapes. Oh, also watch as I move around in the map and the graphical pop-up tells me I've moved into the default region. You might want to fix that, developers. In fact, you might want to fix a lot of this game. Talk to the Watermaster. She's happy. We save the village and we return to the main hub city. This earns me the Steam achievement Water vs. Stars, which only 8.7% of players have. I wonder how many people have ever actually played this game. 
MMO games are notorious for hiding their player counts, and I can't find exact numbers of players anywhere, but it's not going to be high. And of those people that played, I can't imagine many of them put up with the buggy gameplay and got even this far. I know the Steam charts tell me the game is essentially dead, and the subreddit for the game has 126 people subscribed to it, with no one active on the day that I looked. Odds are that very, very few people have ever, or will ever, see the final zone of this game. And the rarest achievement, the Red Planet, that's only been done by 3% of players. You know, normally I'd stop playing now and write a review, but I've got a crazy idea. Otherland has shown me it has visual flair. The opening is just delicious, reality-bending insanity. It's clearly created by someone with a flair for the surreal, and I'm just morbidly curious about how it ends or how bad this game can get. I can't leave this puzzle unsolved. I need to know what happens. There is a horrible curiosity that comes from wanting to know the extent that awfulness can actually reach. And combined with a sense of exploration and wonder of wanting to be one of the only people to ever do something, I am intrigued. So I decide I'm going to do it. I'm going to get that achievement. I'm going to stop the revolution on Mars. And I'm going to do it all while being the only player in the world. If I don't do this, footage of this game may never exist. You may never get to see what the final world looks like, and when this game inevitably shuts down, there may not be any proof these quests ever existed. So we're going deep into uncharted gameplay territory here. When I decided to do this, however, I had no idea the insane grind I was getting myself into. And so ends part one of the strangest MMO on Steam. Join me in part two when it gets weird again, and I make an even stupider choice to solve a seemingly impossible puzzle. And then we discover just how dead this game really is. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs. It's only through your support that I'm able to attempt stupid things like this. You can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And, as always, have a great day.